This video is designed as a configuration guide for those using the Xbox and the Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTUS 1 with Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've been holding off doing this configurator waiting for an update, as although the default configurations are OK, if you try and reconfigure anything, the mappings are a complete mess. So I've decided to go ahead anyway and help those that are struggling at the moment. Today we'll take a look at what are the default configurations and how can you change some of the bindings. And we'll explore some workarounds pending an inevitable update at some point in the future. Welcome to the Sim Hanger. my name's Mark and let's get started. If you want to know more about flight accessories for Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Xbox, check out my earlier video, link in the notes below. Let's start by having a look at the default configuration, so we understand what buttons and axes do what when we first plug in the HOTAS 1 into the Xbox. We'll start with the buttons on the flight stick. As this peripheral can be used with the Xbox and at the flip of a switch on the PC as well, each button has two numbered assignments. So in the example you're looking at right now, the F2 is the Xbox assignment and button 2 is the PC assignment for its configuration. We're obviously only concerned with the Xbox assignments, but I'll show both numbers for the sake of clarity in this configuration guide. The F1 or trigger will toggle the smart camera. The smart camera will automatically change your view progressively to your particular smart target. Or if no smart target is selected, it will default back to the pilot's view. The F2 button, which has the caution hatching on it, carries out two functions. If you're in the cockpit, it will default back to the pilot's view. If you're an external camera, it will default to the external view directly behind the aeroplane. As far as I'm aware, B1 is not assigned at this time and B2 is applying brakes, which would simulate pushing down on the rudder pedals to slow you down. A head switch allows you to look in any direction and also gives you access to the built-in quick views. This button is not numbered. The view key will toggle your view between internal and external view. The start button will pause the simulation and exit to the menus. Turning now to the throttle quadrant, the X button will auto start the engine. A will toggle your parking brakes on and off. B will toggle your landing gear and Y the same thing with your spoilers. Spoilers of course only being visible on those aircraft such as airliners. The previous button is not assigned as a primary function, although it will carry out some sub-functions in various camera modes. Hitting the next button will display the checklists. On the reverse side of the throttle quadrant, we have two buttons, B3 and B4. B3 decreases flaps and B4 increases flaps. Each press of each respective button will raise the flaps or lower the flaps one notch. The default axis assignments are pretty much standard and what you would expect with axis 1 being your throttle. Axis 2 is on the flight stick and it's the twist function for rudder to steer your aircraft. Axis 3 is your elevator for nose up and down and axis 4 aileron for banking your aircraft. There is however a fifth axis and it's the rocker switch on the throttle quadrant. And within the Microsoft Flight Simulator configuration, this is designated Axis 5 and it's elevator trim for small adjustments for nose up or nose down to maintain level flight. The reason I've shown you the Axis assignments here is simply because within the configurator, you will see it will show you 16 different axes from Axis number 1 to Axis number 16. And you can find it very confusing at times. So if we ever wanted to reconfigure any of the axes, we would only have to worry about axis 1 through to 5. If you had the rudder pedals attached, for example, you would have more axes. But once again, it wouldn't get up to 16 axes. We're on the runway, ready to go. Let's check the default settings before we go into the configurator to make sure they're all working as intended. First of all, I'm going to check the F1 key, the toggle smart camera. So I'm going to change my view using the mouse, looking down, and now press the trigger, 
and it defaults me back to pilot view. As soon as I release the trigger, it returns me to my previous view. Using the F2 button, I default back to the standard pilot view. So that all seems to be working exactly as it should. Let's test some of the other button configurations. I'm just going to pull my mixture right the way back to cut the engine and then hit the X button to auto start the engine. The X button of course is on the throttle handle. Yes, that's auto started the engine. Very good. And now I'll just hide the yoke so we can see the parking brake and gear lever and now test the parking brake by using the A button. Multiple presses toggles the parking brake on and off. Now using the B key or B button toggle gear up and down. Now let's test the B3 and B4 buttons which is flaps up and flaps down. First of all hit the B4 button for flaps down and then the B3 button for flaps up again. That's all working exactly as per the configurator. Let's now check the axis. I'll put the yoke back so we can see the movement. Pulling back on the flight stick will give me nose up. That's fine. And pushing forward, nose down. That's working fine. Now to test the bank to the left and to the right. That's great. I will have control of my aircraft. And now time to test the rudder or the twist action on the flight stick. Just move down so I can see the rudder pedals. Now twist it left, twist it right. Rudder's working fine. The rudder helps me steer on the ground and coordinates a turn whilst in the air. Let's now hit the view button and we can then alternate between external and internal views. And now the start button to take me to my menu options. Now pressing the next button which should bring up our checklists. There it is, that's fine. We're not done yet, just a few more things to quickly check. The rocker switch is our elevator trim, and that's the trim wheel down there, highlighted. We'll just get rid of the parking brake, we'll push that in, that's better. Now let's trim nose up and nose down, and we should see the wheel start to turn. This allows us to make small movements of the elevator, both nose up and nose down, so we can maintain level flight. And yes, that seems to be working fine. To make sure this is working properly, make sure you've turned off any pilot assistance. And the last test we'll do for now is the throttle. We will just advance that to full throttle. We can hear the engine starting to spool up, so that's operating as intended. Whilst the engine's advancing, I will remove the parking brake and hold her on the brakes, which is the B2 button. And she's staying stable. That's great. So all the default configurations are working as expected. Let's now head back to our controls menu options and have a look at this in a little bit more detail. To access the configuration for any controls attached we go to options and then controls options and in the submenu we'll see a list of all the peripherals attached. In my instance here I've got a keyboard, mouse, a standard gamepad and the T-Flight HOTUS 1. Before going any further, the first step is to make sure that the peripheral or controller that you want to have a look at is highlighted. In this case, the T-Flight HOTUS 1 is highlighted and therefore the active peripheral. Default profile should not be able to be overwritten, but that's not always the case here. So my recommendation is don't make any adjustments with regards to the default profile. Create a duplicate. This is done by going to the preset manager and then the second icon along is duplicate. Click on that. It will come up and ask you to give it a new name. It's recommended T-Flight HOTUS 1 profile. I'll accept that for now. A note in the top box, the name of the profile has changed to the new one we've just created. Any changes I make can now be made to this one. Using this process of either duplicate or copy, you can create multiple profiles for a single controller. You would need to do this for different types of aircraft, so the profile for a Cessna 152 and a Boeing 787 would of course be very different. 
On the right hand side you have the option to expand or collapse menus to make navigation easier. Our filter is currently set to assigned. That means those buttons and functions that have already been configured. And I mentioned earlier that it was a mess. We saw and tested earlier that the toggle smart camera button was the F1 button. Here it's showing A. We also saw that the F2 or hatch key was reset cockpit view. For some reason it's showing the B4 key here. The assigned buttons to the relevant actions are completely mixed up here. Under the filter settings in addition to assigned you also have all and as the name suggests this will display all possible configurable items. And the third option under the filter tab is essentials and these are those items that Microsoft Flight Simulator think should be allocated. There are three ways we can search to find out what an input is. Right at the bottom under the search tab is select an input. And if we select this item it should list all the buttons and axes available. And it does this and more. By more I mean and to add to the confusion it shows additional axes and buttons that are not available. Using the search option let's choose the X button which we know is the auto engine start button. We've selected that under the filter assigned, but nothing comes up. Again, a complete mess. So instead of select an input, let me search by input and again press the X button and it registers as B1. Needless to say, this is incorrect. However, when we expand the menu, we see in fact it is engine auto start, but again records B1. The engine auto starts correct, but the button B1 displayed is incorrect. We know when we've tested the X button. The problem is not limited just to buttons. I'll now move my rocker switch and search by input. I click in the search by input box and move the rocker switch and it records the F2 key, which is wrong. Yet we know this is axis 5 from our previous tests and it worked in sim. If we select an input and go down to our axis 5, once we get past all the non-existing buttons etc. Remember this is our rocker switch on our throttle that controls our aileron trim. I've chosen axis 5 minus and we see that that is elevator nose down which is correct. And if we choose 5 plus it's nose up which again is correct. We can further confirm that it's axis 5 by going to our sensitivity tab on the right. Clicking on that will display all the various axes available. And if we scroll down to axis number 5 and now press our rocker switch, remember it's treated as an axis and we can see that it's recording there. So this confirms rocker switch is axis 5. So what have we ascertained from all of this? When it comes to trying to identify an axis, the only way we can do it is to use select an input. If we do this method, as we did just now, it correctly identifies that axis. If we search by input, it gives us the wrong information. In terms of our button selection, whatever it displays, no matter how, and I've tried using the search by name as well, and the results are the same, it continually and more often than not displays the wrong information. But despite the information being incorrect on screen, the actual button that we pressed does in fact work. So let's now put this to the test and see if we can change some of the button configurations and also the axis and see what limitations we currently have until such time as a much needed update is available. We'll start with the buttons and then move on to changing an axis. So for the buttons, there's a number of things we're going to do to demonstrate the process. Firstly, we're going to delete the smart camera from the F1 button. And in addition, we're going to delete the brakes from the B2 button and reallocate it to the F1 button or trigger. With our filter on assigned, let's click on the camera and this will display the button allocations. And right at the top is toggle smart camera just what we want. As we move over the box it's highlighted, click on that and what we want to do here is clear the current input. We select that and the box goes blank and now validate. As our filters on assigned, the toggle smart camera has disappeared as it's no longer configured although we can find it if we change the filter to all. 
There's our toggle smart camera two thirds of the way down and nothing's configured, so deletion successful. Back to the right hand side and let's get the filter back to assigned and we'll collapse the menu we're looking for brakes. It's not the parking brakes that we're after, there it is, brakes there. And we follow exactly the same process. We click on the box, clear current input and then validate and it will be gone. I could have reallocated the button at the same time, but we'll do it step by step for simplicity purposes. Once again, we can confirm that it has been deleted by changing the filter to all and looking for our brakes. There it is down there at the bottom and there's nothing allocated. So we know that that has been deleted. Now time to reallocate. So let's click in the box and we're going to select the start scanning option. And then I'm going to press the F1 or trigger key. It shows A, but we already know that that's wrong. But the right button press has been recorded. Note that a warning message has come up to show us that that key is already being used for another function. In this case, it's nothing that will conflict with the aircraft and its operation, so we're okay with that. If, for example, you had something configured to throttle and rudder at the same time, then this would conflict and one of them would have to be deleted. Otherwise, you're going to have problems controlling the aircraft. We're happy with that, so we can go ahead and validate. Now that we've made changes, we must apply and save those changes to the profile. I know I've mentioned it before, but it's worth noting again. Make sure that before you do any changes, your peripheral is on the correct profile. It's all too easy to forget and end up adjusting a profile which you didn't want to change in the first place. So always check and double check. And now we can go back into the sim and see whether that reconfiguration has worked as expected. I'm in the cockpit once again and I'm going to take off the parking brake by hitting the A button and then I'm slowly going to advance the throttle until I start moving. Once I start moving I'm going to start pressing the trigger or F1 button to slow us down. And yes we're slowing down. Now that we've tested it in SIM, we know that it works. We have also now confirmed that although in the configurator the button indicated A was incorrect, this SIM has recorded the correct button press to function as configured. Let's go back now to our controls menu and see how we can change and reconfigure an axis within the SIM using this rather muddled up configurator. I'm going to stay with Axis 5 as we've been using it predominantly throughout the whole video. I'm going to search by input. I'm going to press the rocker switch down. It records F2, which we know is nonsense. So we can't use search by input, but we can use select an input. To find Axis 5, we've got to go past all the various non-existing buttons. Let's just pause here and use axis 6 to explain something. You will see in fact for each axis there are three possible combinations. Axis 6, axis 6 plus and axis 6 minus. The reason for the three is to allow you to configure different types of axis. So for example if it was a throttle we would just choose axis 6. And we could very well do the same for a slider. But for something like a rocker switch, which has a defined movement with a center point, we can define two separate actions to this type of axis. So for an axis to have both plus and minus variables, it needs to be a specific type of axis. The fact that all of them have is another error in the system. We're going to delete the current configuration for the rocker switch. We've chosen 5 minus. We'll click on the box to highlight that and then select clear current input. We'll validate that and that configuration will now be gone. I'll now do exactly the same for the Axis 5 Plus. You know the process, so I'll just speed this step up. We'll do exactly as we did with the previous axis. Clear current input, validate and our rocker switch is no longer configured. And although it's no longer configured, of course, that axis still exists. And we can check that again by going into our sensitivity tab and paging down to axis 5 and moving the rocker switch. It's still functional, it's just not configured to any actions at this time. So we've now seen how to delete an axis, let's now put it back. I collapse the menus to make it easier to find and I'm looking for control trimming surfaces. There it is. Now I'm going to be looking for 
elevator trim up, nose up, and elevator trim down, nose down. We'll start with nose up and we'll click in the box. And this will take us to our configurator. If we choose the start scanning and move the rocker switch, we know it's going to record F2, which is wrong, so this won't work. Unlike the buttons, it will not record the correct action. We need to select an input for any axis. So let's go down and choose axis number 5, and we want 5 plus because it's nose up. There it is. Validate. And there it is, it's configured. Let's now go and choose nose down. We'll choose the same process, exactly the same. We'll select an input, go down to axis 5 minus. We'll select that. Once again, we will validate to confirm our selection. And we've now reconfigured the elevator trim to the rocker switch. Let's go back to Sim and give it a test. A quick reminder again that if you are configuring a peripheral, go to your AI pilot and make sure that all assistance is turned off. You can always turn it back on once you've finished configuring your peripheral. Otherwise, as you adjust your trim, the AI pilot will be trying to correct it and fight against you. The trim wheel's moving nicely, all looks correct. Let's head back to our control options menu. And I just want to talk quickly about sensitivity settings. Now, once again, there is a big problem with the T-Flight HOTUS 1 and sensitivities. And the problem is, as soon as you exit the flight simulator, the settings reset back to default. Very frustrating indeed. What should be happening is sensitivity settings for each profile are recorded separately and as soon as that particular profile is loaded, so are those appropriate sensitivity settings. And it's for that reason that I'm not going to cover sensitivity settings in any great detail in this video. If you want to get a thorough understanding of each and every element covered under the sensitivity settings, then watch this video of mine here. Although it's for the PC, it is exactly the same applies for the Xbox. And it covers it all in detail and explains each and every function. If you can't wait for the update and want some sensitivity settings right now for your HOTAS, then I would recommend that you check out another YouTuber, Hudson. He has produced an excellent video showing you all his settings, including all his sensitivity settings. A recommended watch and I'll leave links to his video in the notes below. So here are the very basics of sensitivity settings. Most are set at the midpoint zero with a plus 100 and minus 100. And it's shown in a grid. A horizontal line shows the amount of physical movement and the vertical line the impact of that movement. Moving it to a minus makes it less sensitive and moving it into a plus makes that axis more sensitive. So in the example above, I've moved the axis minus 46%. As there are five boxes, each box represents approximately 20%. So I'm going to have to physically move my peripheral axis 46% to have a 20% impact in the sim you'll typically find the need to turn down the sensitivity for most aircraft for ailerons, rudder and elevator. I recommend leaving throttles at default. A more linear line on throttle is more realistic. If you're flying a fighter jet, well, you may want to turn those sensitivities into the plus range. Right now, due to the limitations in the configurator, it's not possible to effectively configure reverse thrust. And within the configurator, that would be under throttle, decrease throttle. You could, of course, just allocate this to a button temporarily, such as the B1 or in the new configuration, the B2 button. But that's not very realistic. Ideally, what we'd want to do is press a button and then move the actual throttle itself for reverse thrust. But as the configurator cannot pick up an axis through scanning, we can't configure more than one axis and a button at the same time until an update is provided. Once they sort this mess out, I'll revisit this. As things stand at the date of recording, which is the middle of August, there are not that many compatible flight peripherals available 
for the Xbox for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I find it somewhat surprising that the configurator and ability to change the configuration for the Thrustmaster HOTAS 1 is so limited and so poorly implemented. The PC implementation for the HOTAS 1 is not perfect, but it's a lot better than this. And it's for that reason that I think that the blame does not lie with Thrustmaster, but with Asobo and with Microsoft. But I don't know that for sure. What I do know for sure is they need to sort this out, and they need to sort it out quickly. Well, I hope that this video has been of some help and guidance in terms of any changes to the configuration that you want to do. I would have loved to show you setup for different types of aircraft, but with the current limitations, it's just not practical or feasible to do this at this time. But don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for future notifications, and I'll keep you updated on developments with Microsoft Flight Simulator in the Xbox world. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that, if nothing else, this will help sort out some of the confusion. I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.